director Sarah Gervino, uh, and the writer Jimmy Bushy, or some of the rest of the cast. My name is Chichi Mizrahi. Hi, I'm Christopher Waldor. Hello, my Q composer of the film. So we're so happy to have you here at the festival. I'm going to just start off with a couple of quick questions, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to the audience to uh, to start. So I'll start with the two of you, to, to, to Twiggy and, and Sarah. How did you meet, and how did this process, how did the process of putting the film together uh, uh, emerge? Uh, well, Twiggy uh, found me. Twiggy and Chi found me. We met in Harlem, um, and it was just instant chemistry, artistically and personally. And yeah, it was a magical couple of days, and we decided to work together. It was an incredible gift. And can you talk a little bit about the collaborative process of sort of, of working together so that you're not just as an outsider, but you have an inside perspective on, on telling the story? Sure. So, as Sarah stated, Chi Chi and I um, used to work for a community uh, organization called Faces New York. And at Faces, we had um, in a conversation with our boss, Antonio, about coming up with some sort of project, not clearly defining what that would be exactly, but we had an idea we wanted to do. Um, just not this film, but this big a film. And, um, and Sarah was working on a project at Faces, and um, separate to this project, and we found out that she was a visual artist and filmmaker and approached her. Um, the collaborative process has been amazing. It has been, one, because I'm an insider and I'm a co-writer, yes, but also the cast and the community has have been a huge part of uh, the process of creating the film and input. Um, so collaborative is the best word I can use to describe it, yeah. And if I can ask some of the, some of the subjects, uh, what was the most important thing you wanted to represent about yourself within the film? <laughs> <laughs> So the most important thing I wanted to represent about myself in, in the film is that um, like I'm a human being, um, and human beings go through changes, and I want that to be depicted in a sensitive way that people can relate to, um, especially a lot of people who are like myself, who don't have the opportunity to have <coughs> their story being portrayed in the media. So I just wanted an accurate depiction of the trans experience, um, and I specifically talk about that in the film and related to everything because as human beings we all go through transitions, and I think that a gender transition is one that we're all familiar with because even in a cis, you know, gendering, like in a cisgender, you know, you have to, you some people would come go from a boy to a man, um, and I just think we did a great job with that. Oh, <laughs> Hi, folks. Um, I think for myself, um, first of all, you all have our individual stories, obviously, yes. and you see all these intersections that happen in our community. But I think for myself, um, really, kind of being the voice for young people who kind of deal with the diagnosis of being HIV positive, and um, hoping that I can be an influence for them. I know. Um, being HIV positive has trapped me in a lot of ways, and the great thing about the film is that I think as a collective, I think we all can agree that's been healing for us, and um, yeah. Um, so for me, um, I just wanted to make sure that my legacy and what it is that I've been working for the last 10 years in my community is depicted as such. So meaning the work that I do with the kids, the work of me being 9 to 5, you know, me working at a community-based organization, me devoting my time. But then also leaving that legacy to where after this is all said and done, that people can always reflect back to it and use me as a tool of motivation, but also a tool of therapy and healing. So when you're having those days where you can't relate, you don't understand, and you just don't know what to do, you can always look at that and say, 
well, he was going through the same thing, so maybe I can use him as that tool to you know, navigate me through what it is that I'm going through. Well, for me, it was more like um, coming to terms with my sexuality when I was younger. I didn't have any role models to look towards to help me, like help guide me. And that's when I found Barbara to help guide me. When I found Twiggy, and she became my mother to help guide me. So I think with this film, it'll help a lot of people that were like me, that were younger and lost and didn't know where to go or what to do or how to feel. They can look back on this and see every single story and someone can relate. Even the parents that are in the film, parents can relate as well. Great. Um, I'll turn it over to the audience now if you have questions and I can jump back in as well if needed, but don't be shy. They'll all raise it at the same time. Yeah, all white people. Oh, uh, yes. Well, let's start right here, Jim. Ah, uh, you were also beautiful. First of all, as an old, and I hate to say this, cisgendered male, I have to tell you that I am, I, you are my children and my grandchildren, and I just am so proud that you grabbed life, you know, and found out who you were and didn't look to anyone else to endorse that except each other. My question is, who's your personal hero or heroine or whatever word you want to use today? Because you're role models now, but who do you look to in those moments? And we all have them, no matter what age we are, those moments. So, so the question for all of you is, uh, for, uh, you're all role models now, but who would be your heroes or heroines or whatever you want to call that some inspiration for you? Okay, so my hero, heroine or hero is my mother, Courtney. Um, everyone here knows her, but none of you do. She's a great um, woman, and she has been a very nurturing aspect a, a nurturing figure in my life, um, and I think that, you know, I know that a lot of trans women have been great, great, great people and great artists and great talents throughout history, but we haven't got the recognition we deserved, and oftentimes we have been shunned out of public spaces because we were trans, and I think that she's one of those examples of a genius who hasn't had the opportunities afforded to her because of her experience, and the reason why I allow my story to be told in this film is to shed those, shed that light because I am fortunate to grow up in a time that is allowing trans people to be on the forefront. We're not doing enough, but I'm one story of the thousands and the millions, and I just want um, people to continue to tell those stories. Um, for me, mine would be both my mother's my biological mother and my gay mother Twiggy. And it's kind of like, it works perfectly because it's like half and half. I look up to my mother because she raised me and she was a single mom and she was a very strong woman. Even to this day, I still look to her. And when I'm feeling down and I feel like I can't do something, I think my mother did it so I can keep doing it. And there's certain things that she wouldn't understand as living life as a gay male and having struggles or emotions or certain things that Twiggy would understand and I can go to her when I need her to speak on things or to give me advice and to let me know to guide me in the right way. So, go with them. Um, so for me, it would be my, my, my biological mother. Um, a lot of people don't know, but I speak sign language fluently. My mother's trying to impaired. So her having four kids, me being the baby, and seeing her as a hearing impaired woman go through life trying to obtain the normality and not letting her disability be what enables her and her finding the, the strength to step into the real world and still apply that disability, well, the gift that I would call it, and allowing people to understand what it is to interact with those people. So for me, when I see her cleaning and cooking and waking up every morning and going to work and making sure that I have a roof over my head and clothes on my back and having the nicest stuff, what more than an inspiration do you need than the person that you wake up to every morning and the person who birthed you? So that would be mine. Okay. Twiggy? Um, a question also that, that, I, that I'm curious about. Um, what is your plan in terms of bringing the film to the larger ballroom and Kiki community within, within New York City? What, what, are, what are your thoughts on how you're going to do that? Oh, um, when we found out um, that uh, we uh, would come here, <laughs> um, we immediately started making, uh, we immediately set up meetings with the uh, Kiki Coalition um, and uh, to plan the community screening, which we will do right when we get back. Um, and it was very important that we would tell them 
right away and discuss, you know, where the film will go, um, our hopes for where it will go here and, and then Berlin. And, yeah. Great. Uh, more questions from the audience? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. I'm kind of curious. If you don't mind, then you don't have to tell us, but um, I can't remember your name. Gia. Gia. You're gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm curious what you do, because you were, you have the um, uh, debating, right? Yeah. You're really well. You're really well spoken, and Thank it was you. fun to listen to. But I'm curious what your job is, and also I'm curious how it went in Ireland. So, so the question, one question to you is, uh, if you don't mind letting us know what you do for a living. Okay. Um, so. Um, I was a um, provincial outreach provider at Calumbar Community Health Center, which, <laughs> which is one of the leading um, LGBTQ health centers in New York City. However, I decided that that's not my calling. I don't want to work in HIV prevention anymore. Um, so now I'm trying to refocus myself and um, find out what, I know what I want to do, but just doing that, and I want to be an actress, so just working towards that. I live in New York City, and I'm planning to move to L.A., so that's just my process for now. Great. Um, Ireland was amazing. Um, so we met this woman named Claire Hall, um, who's one of the producers at the MAC in Belfast. Uh, Sarah and I met her, and she was interested in our project very early. Um, and over the course of the past two years, two to four years, we were conversing with her and having meetings with her, and she eventually wanted to bring us to uh, Outburst, their queer arts festival. So that's what we went for. Um, we did everything from teach Broadway classes, teach Vogue classes. Um, we had a double sold out performance. We spoke at colleges. But basically, we wanted to bring ballroom to Ireland, and that's what happened. Okay. That's great. Uh, next question, right here, please. to become an active member of that society, especially in somewhere like Virginia where it's not exactly the most accepted. So my question is basically, what would be the best entryway to be involved and become an educator in the LGBT community? What's the, the best? This is a young person in the audience who's from Virginia, part of the LGBT community, but doesn't feel necessarily connected to it and is wondering what the advice you'd give for how to get into that community and be an educator and be involved. So I have two questions for you. What uh, part of Virginia and in what way do you want to be involved? Richmond and I want to be a sex educator. Okay, so there's tons of resources in <laughs> Richmond actually um, that you can find um, or you can follow me on social media and I'll tell you myself. That's um, <laughs> um, Twiggy on everything, same shameless plug. Um, but no, seriously, um, you, they're not very hard to find, and Richmond also happens to have a ballroom scene. Um, so let's talk. <laughs> uh, yes, please, right there. Are the ballroom events open to the general public, or is it just for each house team to get together? And is, is, is ballroom open to the general public, or is it just for the different the houses to uh, compete in? Uh, ballroom is very public. Um, anyone can come and enjoy it, spectate, and you know if you're into it that much, you can join in, join a house, walk a category, and pretty much do anything you want to do if you choose to do it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, the person waving back there, yes. Okay, so the question is about your futures. Uh, do you do you envision yourselves being able to do ballroom when you're late, when you're older, and do you any of you want to get married? Um, so one thing I'd like to share with people is ballroom isn't this extracurricular activity that a lot of people may think, and I think that's why Kiki is such an important movie because it shows that it's actually a culture, right? And so if I may, on behalf of everyone, I think we'll always be part of ballroom. Um, it doesn't mean that we're always at the forefront participating in competitions, but um, we are all gatekeepers. I think that's what makes all of us great and how we take care of our community. Um, and do I want to get married? Um, so I always said I didn't, 
until I really understood what that meant. And um, there's this story of this lesbian couple um, who were married in Florida. And I think she got like bit by a shark or something. It was some accident and they wouldn't allow her spouse to come That's see right. her while she was in the bed and she passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very unfortunate because they weren't married, but they were partners. I think I just lied and said they were married. I'm a little nervous, so. Um, and then they'd been with each other for so long and they built like a house and they had children. And uh, because they weren't married, the woman's family was able to come and take over everything. So I think in that sense, um, just imagine being with somebody and building and building and building and then, God forbid, they pass away and you don't have no claim over that. So I think that would be my purpose. Um, for me, um, I will always be a part of Ballroom. Um, Ballroom has created who I am. It's given me the backbone. <coughs> Coming into it, I didn't know who I was. And discovering myself through this long journey has me not only dedicated but embedded in Ballroom. And as a part of that question, I kind of use Ballroom to intersect with my work. Um, currently, I'm a program coordinator for Mount Sinai Beth Israel Hospital, and I run um, the HIV AIDS clinic, which is the Breeding Crew Clinic. So that's how I'm intertwining my work with Ballroom. So as long as I'm a part of Ballroom, my passion and my work and my goals will always be dedicated to Ballroom to make sure that those youth and those individuals can stay safe and 2020 does become reality and that the next 30 years for them will be disease-free and promising and aspiring. And for me to want to get married, hell yeah, of course. Who doesn't want to find that man of the dreams and marry him and wake up to him and have to cook in boxers with a nice body? All that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, that's the stuff we all want, don't we? So, I mean, of course, I'm going to get married and stuff. But until that time, I think that I'm married to my work and my career. So, until the universe gives me that, that, that blessing and bestows him better upon me, I'm married to my cast and to my career. Um. I wouldn't be at the Sundance Film Festival in Utah answering your question if it wasn't for Ballroom. So I, Ballroom will always be a part of my life. And um, I am a makeup artist right now. I'm a lover of art, so anything that has to do with dance, film, anything, I would love to be a part of in my future. And I would love to get married as well. <laughs> Uh, the same thing for me, Ballroom, I'm just a DJ in the scene, but you know, I, I became a DJ because of Ballroom, and that's taken me to about 30 countries around the world already, so that's something that I plan to always be a part of as long as I can. Um, being married? I think so. When, when did they come? So I'll play with you. Yeah. <laughs> Simon doesn't know if he's married me or my Q yet, so that's the whole thing. Yeah, I've been debating this whole show that I'm going to marry my Q or Chi Chi. He doesn't know if he's married me or my Q or Chi Chi. wants me to cook in boxers. And I like to wear panties, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, Terry, you want to see? <laughs> No. no. Okay. So uh, we do have to wrap things up, but I want to thank you so much, uh, Sarah, and Katie, and all the rest of uh, the class for being part of the class today. If you may, we do want to do one thing before you all leave. Um, so Chi Chi's birthday is coming up um, this weekend, the 31st. the 31st, and uh, we've been doing this thing called the 29 uh, Dips of Sundance. So dipping is one of the elements of Vogue. So we want to ask you to just cheer. We want to make a quick video of him voguing. We are on now dip 26, counting down. So we have a, like a crap load of dips.